A patient treated in Nebraska has died. Dr. Martin Salia just arrived in Omaha on Saturday. At that point, he was unresponsive and his organs were shutting down. KMTV Action 3 News reporter Lindsay Thies is live at the Nebraska Medical Center where they delivered the grim news late this morning. Lindsay. Well, Craig, Dr. Martin Salia was in the Omaha Metro for 36 hours getting around the clock treatment. He died early this morning. Our thoughts and prayers are with everybody in the Salia family. After two successful outcomes, Nebraska medicine doctors lost Ebola patient Dr. Martin Salia. Salia arrived in Omaha Saturday afternoon so sick he had to be strapped to a stretcher and moved onto an ambulance. His condition, extremely critical. In spite of that, we had nurses and doctors working literally around the clock to try to reverse his condition, but were unable to do so. From the plane to the hospital, Salia was receiving IV fluids. Once at the med center, doctors gave him the experimental drug ZMAP and convalescent plasma, a transfusion full of antibodies from an Ebola survivor. But Salia went into kidney and respiratory failure. Within the first few hours of his arrival, we started running continuous dialysis. And uh, within the first uh, 12 hours, he had progressed to complete respiratory failure, uh, requiring uh, intubation and mechanical ventilation. Doctors say his blood pressure dropped and Salia went into cardiac arrest. Now, with heavy hearts, doctors must look at the lessons learned from this patient. They say Salia's body will have to be cremated and autopsy is too dangerous. Some blood samples will be sent to the CDC for research. Despite the loss, doctors say they don't feel the defeated. I know that we gave him every possible chance to survive. Back out here live now, the doctors and nurses and team that cared for Dr. Salia are now being watched themselves. They have to take their temperatures twice a day and report symptoms into a system, computer system, once a day. Right now, Dr. Phil Smith, in charge of the biocontainment unit, says that none of his staff has any symptoms and they are not a public health threat. We're live near 42nd and Emily Lindsay Thies, KMTV Action 3 News. Thanks, Lindsay. Dr. Salia's family was in Omaha during his treatment. They have asked for privacy and returned to their home in Maryland. Dr. Salia ran a Methodist hospital in the Sierra Leone capital of Freetown. He first showed Ebola symptoms 11 days ago, but initially tested negative for the virus. His family spoke a few days ago. Salia's son admitted he worried about his father's Ebola zone work. He left here and go back to his country. That made me worried a little bit, especially when he's a doctor and he, he treats patients. That's the part that is scary because you don't know who has the virus. Salia himself said he knew he had to go help. The death is very difficult for those closest to 44-year-old Martin Salia, including the men and women who attempted to save his life for the 36 hours he was here. KMTV Action 3 News reporter Rebecca Ray is live with how the staff at the Nebraska Medical Center is coping. Becky. Experimental drugs and research innovations were ready, but even the most advanced medicine couldn't save him. At this time around, there was no good news from doctors at Nebraska Medical Center. Instead, the mood was somber as doctors take Salia's death to heart. Doctors say responding physicians gave it everything and then some. Their main focus was saving his life. Now they need some time to grieve and find peace within themselves. And I think our staff, um, they're deeply saddened right now and grieving um, this loss. Um, because with all of our patients, you just develop a personal connection immediately. Um, but I will say that this team, this is their mission. This is what they're committed to do. This is what they have been trained for. The family and to our staff. While this experience has been incredibly difficult for doctors, they say it further solidifies how they want to continue to care for patients and provide the best level of care possible. And staff are not alone in their grieving. Uh, dozens attended a prayer service last night coming up at 6 o'clock here from a United Methodist pastor about how their community is grieving as well. Reporting live, Rebecca Ray, KMTV Action 3 News.